Hello there again. We're going to continue with the scroll of biblical chronology and prophecy that we've been talking about. I want to take a moment to mention my book, which contains the scroll of biblical chronology and prophecy. This is the book that's been published. Everything that's in the scroll that you've been seeing in these presentations is also in this book, plus a lot more, and it's available on my website, World Wide Web. And focus up there on the website name. World Wide Web, TorahTimes.org. I should patch up that .org up there. O-R-G. All right. I'll show you about my other book in a few minutes when it becomes relevant. All right, let's focus here on AD 30. Okay, and I just got through, I know what I got through talking about. Actually, for three quarters of the year, Yeshua's age actually does correspond to the year A.D. So, um, see, um, Anno Domini actually um, tells the truth three quarters of the time. Okay, about as much as you can expect from a Roman year. So Yeshua is age 30 and A.D. 30. After, after January, that will match. Okay, we have um, ministry with John the Baptist. Yeshua's first Passover in John 2.3, or the 2.13, first Passover of his ministry. Okay, we have his ministry with John in that same year. John the Baptist, or John the Immerser. Um, Imprisonment of John happening about in the fall of A.D. 30 sometime. We have the woman at the well in Samaria at the beginning of winter, or between A.D. 30 and 31. We have that following spring, we have a reference to the second first Sabbath in Luke 6.1, which is the first Sabbath after Passover, the 15th of Nisan being the first first Sabbath. Second first Sabbath being the weekly Sabbath. And that would be March, Nisan 18, March 31, AD 31. All right, then we have uh, another Passover alluded to in John 6 4. Um, and in co join with that, the feeding of the 5,000. We have Yeshua at Sukkot in the fall of A.D. 32. And then we have Yeshua at Hanukkah, or the winter feast, mentioned in the book of John, in the, between 32 and 33 A.D. Okay, and he retired to a place called Ephraim. And then he conducts one last huge ministry starting in Galilee. Um, Seventy emissaries went before Messiah, and he's to 35 places, and then he followed them to those 35 places. Okay, taking almost a whole year to conduct that. And then he arrives in Jerusalem in the spring of AD 34, here's AD 34, um, where he's cut off and hanged. All right, to pay the penalty for, for our, the sins of Israel and Judah. All right. You see over here in the sabbatical period column, that of the 62 sevenths, the 62nd sabbatical year is from A.D. 32 to A.D. 33 in the fall. Okay, and then immediately after that in the spring of A.D. 34, that's when Messiah is cut off. Alright, this is a, a four-year ministry for Yeshua. Okay, and with um, bracketed by five Passovers, Passover of A.D. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, with those being the endpoints. And actually, um, Isaac Newton figured that the ministry was four years with five Passover. Also, Thomas Lewin, a famous chronologer, came to the same conclusion that Yeshua's ministry was four years. And Anyone who tries to fit all the details in and the references to John's Passovers and the allusions of Luke 
um, 6, and also Luke 9, and then Luke's travelogue come up with the same conclusion, that the ministry had to be at least four years. So knowing that the scripture uses certain dates in Roman chronology, it never uses any Greek dates, but it does use the Roman date, so we know that the scripture would know that that was going to be a certain date. Um, the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, Yeshua's baptism, AD 30 being the first Passover, and then four years of ministry brings us to AD 34. Okay, now if we look at my next book here, this is also available on the website, the Resurrection Day of Messiah Yeshua. Okay. Hayom Ba'asher Kuma Yeshua HaMashiach, Min HaMetim. When it happened according to the original text. Available World Wide Web TorahTimes.org. Alright. This is the first edition. Okay. We're going to look at a chart on page 322 here. Put this up here like this. All right, you got a good shot of this here? All right. We saw the scroll that the walls were built in 445 B.C., which is the 20th year of Artaxerxes. And this block here marks the first of seven sabbatical years. Scripture in Daniel 9 says there were seven sevens. Okay, so this sabbatical period or seventh year spans 445 B.C. to 444 B.C. And I have some ellipses dots here, okay, and then we have the seventh sabbatical year here, the other ones being in this period that's left out, in 402 BC, and then we have 49 years from the beginning of the first sabbatical period to the completion of Ezra's ministry in 396 BC. Here Ezra's reform is completed. Okay, and then we can start counting the 62 sabbatical years, 62 sevens here. So that counts out starting in 396 to 395 B.C. And again, I have the ellipse dots here. Of course, this is all spelled out in detail in the Scroll of Biblical Chronology and Prophecy. When we come to the 62nd, 7, septet, or sabbatical year, from A.D. 32 to A.D. 33, Okay, and in the first opportunity for a Passover after that end of that sabbatical year is Nisan 14 of A.D. 34. This was when Yeshua was hanged, or the crucifixion. And then we go off into eschatology after that. 2,000 years equals two days. That's a sowed interpretation. It's not a Peshat for Hosea 6.2. Okay, and I label this here a possible future with the uh, next Jubilee coming up in AD 2035 and the last of Daniel's 70 sabbatical years coming up in AD 2034. And again, a solid interpretation of the day of Yahweh being the third day, okay? And in the scroll of biblical chronology of prophecy, this part I label an educated guess, okay? I'm not going to set any absolute dates in the future, and if you study this chronology enough and you understand the suspended year principle from 1 Kings 6-1 of the 480 years, and also the segmented nature of the 390 years of sin for Israel and the 40 years for the sin of Judah, then you will understand that the Almighty can stop the clock, and he's, he stopped it several times. The prophet Daniel thought that the kingdom would um, be coming at the end of the Babylonian exile, uh, then he had to be corrected by the messenger of Yahweh, um, who said that there would be 77s, and so on. So, it's possible for the Almighty to put in gaps with the stop, stopwatch principle, or the suspended year principle. Okay, but in the final analysis, when everything is fulfilled, it will be seen that um, it's perfect in the perfect pattern of the Almighty with the sabbatical and the jubilee year. So that's why I label 
um, this is a possible future or an educated guess in the scroll of biblical chronology and prophecy. All right. What I want to concentrate now on is this um, AD 34 here, when, when the crucifixion was. We'll drop down here to AD 34. Now, using computer programs or astronomy programs, we can calculate out when the Passover was in each of these years, okay? And it turns out that the 14th of Nisan in AD 34 was on a Wednesday, the fourth day of the week. So the crucifixion would have been on the fourth day of the week, and then there would have been three days and three nights, and Yeshua would have been raised on the Sabbath day. We go back to AD 33, we can calculate that. AD 33 yields um, a Friday date for the 14th of Nisan, all right? And of course, a Friday to Sunday cannot accommodate the three days and three nights of Matthew 1240. If we go back to AD 32, we find that there aren't any possible dates that would agree with Scripture that you could get for Passover, okay? Actually, Nisan 14 and this year was on Monday, April 14th. Okay, so AD 32, which is over here actually, I was pointing at age 32 for Yeshua. AD 32, the Passover, here's the spring. Um, actually, Nisan 14 cannot be on a Wednesday in this year or a Friday, um, or even a Thursday. And AD 31, um, again, there isn't a, a Friday or a Wednesday date in this year. And that is due to the fact that we have to intercalate the word, the year um, at the circuit of the year. Okay, in AD 30, that could provide a Friday date for Nisan 14. Um, however, again, it doesn't fit with the three days and three nights. So the only year that actually could work with the information we have on Yeshua's crucifixion and resurrection is AD 34. And this is also the only year that can work um, with Daniel 9, the 62 sabbatical years. All right. And if we jump back up to this chart here, again, the prophecy was given in 440, or the commandment to rebuild the city was in 445 BC. And the city was, and it was given by Artaxerxes. And Josephus uses the throne name Cyrus for this Artaxerxes. Um, also illustrating what we talked about before, that um, Cyrus is a, meaning shepherd, scripture gives that too, the scripture also calls it a title. Okay, and you saw the lexicons in the earlier presentation of how Cyrus is a title. And so the Isaiah prophecy calls for Cyrus to say that the temple should be rebuilt and that the city should be rebuilt. And that is split over two Persian kings, both with the title of Cyrus, Cambyses, and then Artaxerxes the first, okay, in his 20th year. This starts the clock for the counting of the seven sevens in Daniel 9. And then when that comes to a conclusion, we start counting the clock for the 62 sevens in Daniel 9. And again, with the suspended year principle that we've illustrated before, um, we have a gap. History has shown that there is a gap between the, the first coming or the crucifixion of Messiah is hanging and uh, and his second coming. At least 2,000 years will, will transpire till 2034 and 35. Uh, it could be um, completed at the next Jubilee. Maybe it'll take another Jubilee after that. I don't know the answer to that. Um, and we're also, um, there are some years in which the sighting of the new moon would be uncertain, so we might not know the day or the hour of his coming. This book, let's go here, this chapter here. Talks about Daniel's prophecy of 77s. Okay, here's a chart that talks about various ways to count to seven. Okay. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is because uh, the usual interpretations of Daniel 9 count in terms of years, okay? 
and they don't count sabbatical years, okay? But the prophecy um, says sevens should be counted, okay? And seven is either a whole sabbatical period or it is the sabbatical year itself. And if you look at this middle part of the chart here, you can see that we have two sabbatical years, but if you were to count up all the years, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in a space of eight years, we can have two sevens, or two sabbatical years. So actually, you don't require a period of 483 years um, to fit the seven sevens and the 62 sevens. And if you were to try to use 483 years and start in 445 BC, then you're going to end up way beyond the time when Yeshua was hanged. Um, the, pro the, the time sequence will be too long. And this, realize, this not realizing that the sevens in Daniel 9 are actually sabbatical years has caused the Christian chronologers to mess up the prophecy. And of course, um, the Jewish chronologers aren't going to give the Christian chronologers much clue as to how to solve the problem um, because they aren't interested in Yeshua being the Messiah either. The church isn't interested in the Torah, so they're ignoring the sabbatical years. The Jews pay attention to the sabbatical year, but they're not interested in Yeshua being the Messiah. So since both of them, both parties, ignore a key element of the prophecy or, or key truths needed to interpret it, neither party has the exact solution or answer to it. Okay, because the one party is rejecting the Torah and the other party is rejecting the Messiah. Okay, but this, this here is showing how the exact solution um, is going to be obtained in the chronology. AD 34. Um, flip over here to another page 